Hey y'all, this is going to be a little bit different from my normal videos. We're going to make this four-wheeler a little bit more practical for a homestead situation by taking it from this and turning it into this, which isn't a big difference, but just having a winch on a homestead or a farm use, total game changer. So we're going to add this 4,000, sorry. This is a 3,000 pound synthetic rope winch from X-Bull. Uh, I'll try to get my notes back together and kind of give you an idea of what we're getting into, what we're changing on this. And obviously it's just a winch, but just a winch is complete change for what you can use it for here on a farm or on a homestead. Hey y'all. I just finished the video for the X-Bull unboxing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting it together, uh, getting the four-wheeler. It's right off to the side. I'll get it back in frame in a minute. Uh, I'm going to get everything started, but this is possibly going to become a two-part. Uh, mosquitoes are getting pretty bad, and even though I've got uh, got my thermocells going, uh, it's probably going to be a minute before they get finished, and the sun's already going down. So, I'm going to start putting some stuff together, show you all a little bit of what needs to come off of the four-wheeler, and then from that, we'll see if this becomes a, a multi-part uh, videoing, taping, uh, or if I can actually get all this knocked out. Like I said, mosquitoes are getting pretty bad. I'm getting ate up, but we'll see what I can get through. So, let me get you all repositioned, take a look at everything. Uh, what we'll probably do is pull the panel off of the four-wheeler real quick and then go to putting all this together. Uh, that should be possibly the most uh, logical pathway. So let me get this camera repositioned. We'll get you all over here real quick and get that panel pulled off. All right, so over here in front of the four-wheeler, you've got a panel here that uh, comes off to get to the winch location. We're going to use a T27 is the correct size uh, Torx head. So what you're going to do is you've got one here. I did already sort of start loosening it up. Uh, you'll get a little bit of a pop whenever you first start. So that uh, that is skipped at the moment. Uh, what I would normally recommend is using my impact, but unfortunately I have a bunch of T25s and no T27s that I can locate. So from the moment, like I said, we'll just pull off this panel. If I can find one to put it back on, that'd be great. But I don't have high hopes. So as I talk my way through this, like I said, there are four. That's going to be one and two three right there and you'll have your fourth one on the opposite over here finish putting pulling these off and I'll get y'all back all right so sometimes it just takes thinking about it long enough to realize where you had the right tools or the, at least the tools that you wanted so make this a little bit quicker found my impact get done with these I'm going to sit them right beside me as close as I can. And then you find out that even then, sometimes you got the wrong equipment. That's okay. Not too bad. I was more afraid that I was going to wallow that out. So when you pull this off, what you're going to end up doing as we go is you can see where there's some little cutouts around this. Maybe you can't. You can kind of see through them. We end up removing those. Uh, I'll probably get out my little, a few different tools, get that figured out, dremel it, something. But you're gonna come in, we're gonna mount our plate right there. So let me grab that. We'll figure out where that needs to go. We'll also mount that uh, winch in there and we'll go from there. So here's our mount. Uh, like I said, we are probably going to be 
putting the winch in first and then mounting it. Uh, I just wanted to double check that this does fit in here. And that actually looks really good. Um, so what we have, you've got four rivet nuts already in here and you've got four mounting holes. Sorry, mosquitoes are still here, not as bad. Thanks to that thermosil. Uh, but here we are, we've got four rivet nuts. They're already in from the factory or from this crew, uh, Extreme Max. Uh, and it does have their website, Meg, may not see, extrememax.com and their phone number. Uh, so nice and easy. I assume to get a hold of them if they're going to be that upfront on the product. So we know that it fits. Back up here, the tailgate, we'll get it mounted in. All right, so obviously, camera's here where y'all can actually see it. You don't have to actually see my face. But what we have here is the hardware that came with our mount. We've also got here the hardware that came with the winch. So we're gonna play, let's see what happens, and uh, we'll figure out what equipment we need and where. So bear with me for a minute. We're gonna see what's going on. And I do have the installation instructions for the X-Bull, as well as the Max, the Extreme Max winch mount. Um, so bear with me. I'm going to be reading while I'm doing this, and I'll just bring you all back in as I, as I go through. So we're back. Uh, we ran into an issue last night with my fair lead. Uh, the fair lead that comes with the Expo is a 4 and 3 eighths. And what I actually ended up needing was the four and seven eighths. So I ran down to just Harbor Freight, grabbed me a Badlands uh, fair lead. Shouldn't be anything really big deal with that. So we're gonna run that. Um, I am going to see if I can continue to use the mount came with a, with a set of carriage bolts. So I'm gonna see if I can run this nut with that. Um, the reason I say that is I did order one off Amazon and unfortunately it said that I had to use uh, hard a different set of hardware uh, said that I had to use a like this Badlands comes with uh, the hex head uh, the Allen wrench but uh, I'm gonna swap that out for what came with the with the mount we're gonna try that uh, unfortunately I didn't catch that when I was doing all the, all the looking into everything, but basically this is the mount that came with X Bull. Obviously, it matches. But whenever you went to this one, you're just a little bit off. Uh, obviously, we can kind of tell that looking at it now. But last night I could not, and then realized, oh, we gotta shut this down. Anyway, I'm going to. Just set everything up. I'm going to put the winch into the mount and then we'll get back over to the four wheeler and mount it up. So, the positive and the negative of buying some of these universal parts is that you get universal hardware so the mount is obviously for the sportsman that that was made sure of but when they send all of their stuff like these universal plates you get all kinds of hardware stuff that you'll never use so now i've got a bag of stuff that i'm just trying to figure out um I did also see that with this mount they sent two different sizes of these bolt of these carriage bolts 
for the fair lead. Um, that being stated, if you're using a fair lead, I think it's one set of bolts, and if you're using rollers, it seems like it might be a different set of bolts. Either way, uh, just double check because I did put a one of the shorter bolts in the first round and it would not tighten up to what I needed it to. But I just messed up, I think. We'll find out. Maybe not. Maybe that'll catch. We'll find out. Uh, I may just have to take this fairly back off. Probably be easier anyway. So we'll do that. Uh, one thing I'm not liking about this winch already is that it only mounts to two bolts. Um, you can see, and it's just the inline bolts that mount. These look like they would have mounted, and they might have, but uh, they don't have any bolts to put in there. So we're gonna run with it. We'll see how it works. If it needs more bolts, we can always fix that later. Um, I'm running this as is from the box, other than my Harbor Freight Fair Lead. So we're gonna see how that works. I'm gonna get everything tightened up and back over to the four wheeler. All right, not sure if I said this yet, uh, or if it's one of the parts that I'm gonna be editing out, but Polaris has right up here, your wiring is already pre-done. Um, I am going to trace it back to make sure before I hook all that up, uh, to make sure that everything goes where I need it to go. Uh, otherwise we'll bypass that and run the wires off of the uh, control box that was included with the winch. But we've got four mounting holes here. I'm 99% sure I explained that, but we're just gonna slide this winch in here. And drop the mount into its spot. Uh, these are 9 16 bolts from from Extreme Max. Again, this is one of those positions where it's just kind of awkward to get into, but should be all right. And I'm hoping that my audio is still good because I have yet to find my microphone after the move. That's okay. We're going to figure it out. It's like going back in time to one of my other videos. I only got it a couple times with the with the mic set up. So I'm just starting these by hand. And then I've got an assortment over here of whether I want to use a hand wrench or socket, depending on what will fit in here. Uh, but it does look like I need an extension real quick. <clears throat> if I would have been smart, I would have uh, moved all of this onto the concrete. Instead, I'm over here in the dirt. But shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to tighten these up, bring y'all back. So we're back here. I made some jumps uh, that I didn't get on video. Obviously, I put this mount in. Um, I don't remember if I actually videoed that or not, but we're going to go as if I didn't. So I did get this mount in. There's four bolts in the back that hold this whole assembly in. Um, if you are getting to the point where you're going to be doing this, double check. You may want to do your front differential before you put it in, depending on what mount you're doing. If you stuck to this Extreme Max, uh, Extreme Max mount, very simple. We're going to pull the four bolts, uh, disconnect your positive and negative from your winch, and the whole thing will, fall, will slide out so you can get back to that differential. Very simple process. Uh, so you'll have four bolts here for your plastic 
four bolts on the mount itself and positive and negative over here. Uh, and that should be able to slide everything out. What I did, which you can't really see from the angle, I just zip tied my control module that came with the X bull right here into the frame, onto the frame, um, and ran my power. Instead of using the Polaris power, because I couldn't figure out, this is on me, couldn't figure out where the negative was, where the positive was. Uh, I did find a positive wire lead back there that was labeled met with the winch, but I couldn't find the negative, and maybe I had it wired correctly, maybe not. Anyway, uh, it didn't turn on for me. That's fine. I just ended up keeping the module up here, uh, ran the yellow and blue that uh, X-Bull shows, ran that, and then I just ran my positive and negative red and black back to the battery. Um, it does not have a relay between or a fuse between. That is in hopefully inside of this monitor or, or a control box. I'm not mudding anymore, even though it's dirty. I'm not mudding with this. This is strictly here around the house. So I'm not too worried about that being uh, too water protected. We'll get around to that later on. As for right now, I'm gonna grab this camera. We're gonna go a little bit more uh, in hand and I'll show you what happened there. So we ran from here, module blocks is here, Positive and negative came up. There's a little pass through, which you may be able to see. We'll find out. You can see the red wire here. There's a pass through. It follows with that Polaris uh, stock harness. And I just followed it around. Bear with me if it's floating a little bit. Red and black is me. Right here. This is the left side. We've got red and black. I just followed these same harnesses back and around. You see where I've got my stuff. And then over to the battery. Very simple, very simple uh, process. And then I just ran it in with my accessory because I've got a battery tender that runs as well. Get you where you can see it positive and negative are hooked up back here. Uh, like I said, I did not run any relay in between. I just ran with what they provided from x -Bull. So that keeps it out of the way for the most part. And that keeps me relatively clean. And I'll clean up the, uh, the zip ties from over here. And then from that, get this resituated again from that we took our our front I took my Dremel cut this piece off here we are we'll, we'll get this sanded up a little bit cleaned up because it's very rough edges from the Dremel and that'll sit right in there I'll put my four bolts back in run my hook down to my lead or to my to my point and that'll be it that makes our uh, our x bull install on a polaris 800 efi this is a 2013 version uh, i did notice in purchasing some other equipment that it does not match up with the touring version or anything i'm not positive down here down here i know that it matches the 500 o h o i believe it is uh, so you'll just have to check what, uh, what mounting option you got. That'll be it. We'll, uh, do a few more small ideas. Uh, one thing I did not do yet is the handlebar mount. So the handlebar, uh, remote will still have to be wired in. This is a very simple plug and play but it does have one red that goes to something in the uh, starter. It'll hook onto the starter. I just uh, I have to look that up and figure out what's going on there. But it should be simple. And that'll give me 
another one until then i'll just run that little remote so that'll be it